This is ABC 15 Mornings. Dangerous acts and challenges. It's very shocking, and depending on the age of the user, it could be a very impressionable age. Can TikTok make its platform a safer place? Wearing masks indoors and at schools. Case count, hospitalizations, the spot positivity rate, the rate of transmission are all dropping like a rock. Are changes being made too soon? Making movie history. Thank you over well. I'm excited and I, I'm just extremely blessed. A deaf actor nominated for an Academy Award and he grew up right here in the Valley. A long rebound, Chris Paul. He's looking to push up ahead to Book. Book inside the finish and the foul. The Suns with another win and now get ready for an NBA Finals rematch happening at the Footprint Center. The last couple have been nail biters at times, yeah. a little weird at times. So yeah, we're excited about this rematch for sure. I'm excited for to see absolutely what they can do because we know they're on fire right wow. now. So you better watch out, Bucks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You've been warned this morning. Nick Saletti here alongside Kaylee O'Kelly on a Wednesday. It's hump day. We're kind of smack talking because <laughs> I, I think we just feel really confident about our weather. We turn now <laughs> to our meteorologist, Iris Ormazio. There's just something about all this vitamin D. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going to see abundant sunshine today and great conditions. Just a little warmer. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I have to speak for everybody that's a local that's kind of like doing a nervous laugh. Oh, it's going to be warm and in the 80s, but then that quickly turns into 100 degrees. We know, we know, but we're going to try not to think about that, right? And just kind of brag a little bit to everybody who's in town visiting this week as temperatures are heading into the upper 70s and 80s over the next few days. Right now, we're at 53 degrees. We'll stay in the low 50s in Phoenix for the next couple of hours, then a quick warm up 70 by lunchtime before we reach a high of 78. Today will be the warmest day of the year so far and then we're going to get even warmer tomorrow. So if you're heading out to the Waste Management Phoenix Open today, the WM Phoenix Open, know that our temperature will be right at about 50 degrees at 8 o'clock. And then as the bird's nest opens today, 77 in Scottsdale with sunny, clear skies. We'll talk about how high those temperatures climb in that full seven-day forecast still ahead. Megan Thompson, though, keeping us updated on that morning commute here on this Wednesday. Well, Iris, you know, when we were talking in the 5 o'clock hour, we were looking at those gorgeous green conditions as you we're heading out the door. Well, it's that time of the morning traffic predictor. Let us know those speeds. They're going to slow down and here is the result. Just a little bit of slowing starting to build here on the I-10 eastbound. So you'll be tapping the brakes and then going and then tapping the brakes a little bit more as you're heading towards the stack. That speed dropping below 40 miles per hour. Similar story on the Loop 101 Agua Fria as you're making your way onto the 10 and the 17 southbound as you're making your way towards the stack right around 45 miles per hour. We do still have this debris reported in the roadway on the 51 south near Greenway. It's off to the left hand side. Your traffic flows do still look OK. Just watch for that. That alert and the loop 202 westbound a stalled vehicle. I saw this one on our cameras near Country Club Drive that went off to the right hand side too and off the freeway in Tempe Priest Drive a crash at University. I'll get you a check of those desert drive times still ahead. All right, Megan, thank you. You know, it is considered the most addictive social media app with users spending Almost an hour on this thing, 50 minutes every single day, which is well above Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And this morning, we know that TikTok is announcing some major changes. Amelia Fabiano joining us live right now. Amelia, the goal is to make this extremely popular platform both safer and healthier for users. Yeah, well, Nick, over the past few years, we've seen that social media can really be dangerous, actually, especially with children sometimes. Recent studies show when it comes to TikTok, more than 60% of users are actually under the age of 29. Most of them are in their teens. The vast majority, of course, watching other people's videos. Young people often use TikTok for entertainment, but it does have a dark side. They can find dangerous hoaxes on there, content that promotes eating disorders, sometimes offensive speech even. While the company says changes are going to stop or limit this type of content, it hasn't really provided specifics on exactly how these changes will be made. As to whether these changes can realistically improve what kids are seeing while they're scrolling, experts say these updates are a good start. It's very shocking and depending on the age of the user, it could be a very impressionable age and that is where the real potential shock is. It's very important for social media platforms to continually reevaluate their community guidelines because life is ever changing, threats are ever changing, so reevaluating them really makes the user safer. 
Yeah, it has to evolve. And you may remember last year across the valley, schools were actually dealing with vandalism because of this TikTok trend called devious licks. It encouraged students to steal, even damage school property. Arizona's two largest school districts had to send out letters to parents, letting them know what was going on in those schools. TikTok is the fastest growing social media platform. Its engagement is higher than its competitors. But get this, studies show TikTok users will actually open their app dozens of times a day. It's pretty wild, but yeah, realistic when you think about it. I mean, I'm always opening Instagram, scrolling down. It's easy to get sucked into, Kaylee. FOMO, fear of missing out, yep. right? We are addicted to that. So hopefully some of these changes will help to make right. some of that stop. Thank you, Amelia. 605 this morning, Avondale police are investigating a shootout in a parking lot at a shopping center. Officers finding more than 50 shell casings in the parking lot near Indian School on 107th Avenue. We're told one person was shot. Right now, we are working to get an update on their condition. The bullets also hitting several cars here. We spoke with one man caught in the crossfire. Yeah, it must have been the glass that hit me because, I mean, I felt something. I felt like this and I saw the blood. I said, well, it couldn't be a bullet because I'd be dead right now. So, you know, or I thought maybe it grazed me. A police are now working to figure out whether the shootout was connected to a nearby car theft. They say everybody involved was detained or is being questioned this morning. New information on that officer involved shooting in Mesa that left one man dead. We're now learning the suspect was holding a replica handgun when he was shot. Police are responding to calls about a family fight at a home near Dobson and University Tuesday. The parents telling 911 their adult son may have a gun. Investigators say he ignored commands to drop the weapon and pointed what they thought was a handgun directly at their officers. 606 and ADOT is facing claims of failing to design safe highways all to prevent wrong way drivers. The legal action filed by the family of a man who was killed on I-10. Tomorrow marks one year since the crash that claimed the life of Bobby Kramer, the Navy veteran, husband and father known for his giving spirit and helping others. Out of high school, he went and served his country and then got into the restaurant industry afterwards to take care of his community, bring smiles. I mean, he couldn't walk into a place when he was behind the bar and not smile. And the suspected wrong way driver in this case was charged with reckless manslaughter. Well, it has been one year since the city of Phoenix's street racing task force formed and in just a few hours, the team made up of about 14 officers will let the city council know what they've been able to do to try and stop these dangerous drivers. The group says from February of 2021 until January of 2022, they've handed out nearly 560 citations and arrested more than 440 people. Last September, the city also added an ordinance allowing police to tow an impound vehicles involved in street racing. Between March 2021 and January of this year, nearly 300 cars were towed for racing, reckless driving and obstructing a roadway. That presentation to the city council is set for 930 this morning. We will keep you posted on what comes of it. Do you have a road issue or a question for the Operation Safe Roads team? You can call 833-AZ-ROADS or email roads at abc15.com. Okay, way to take action for us, Megan. 608 in your COVID headlines. The more severe Delta variant is basically gone here in the U.S. The CDC says there are no new Delta cases in the most recent weeks that data was collected. The agency also reporting the more contagious Omicron variant now accounts for 100% of new cases. The subvariant of Omicron BA 2.1 now making up roughly 4 percent of these new cases. It looks like the Omicron surge is slowing down here in Arizona. The seven day average for new COVID cases is below 7,000. Hospitalizations are also dropping with inpatient beds down nearly 18 percent in just a week. And now to our state capitol where the Arizona Senate Education Committee is approving a major expansion of the state's school voucher program. The proposal would make all kids attending schools with a high percentage of low income families or students who qualify for free or reduced cost lunches eligible for the voucher program. Kids of first responders, military veterans and nurses would also qualify. The program allows parents to use state funding to pay for private school and for education costs. Next on ABC 15 mornings, a popular restaurant chain already raising prices three times since the start of the pandemic. If you like Chipotle, though, get ready for the menu to cost you even more and not just for the guac. Plus, taking control of the way you feel. Coming up, how you can add up to 13 more years to your life.
And we all love good news, right? We'll yes. tell you about a Mesa-born actor who just made film history with his Oscar nomination. I love this. 609 now in taking you live outside on the I-17 near Indian School Road. Those southbound lanes definitely starting to slow down as it's getting more crowded out there. We're going to check in with your desert drive times and traffic predictor to see what those speeds will look like in the next few minutes. 613, let's get to your morning headlines. The bill to prevent a government shutdown this month now heads to the Senate. The government was set to run out of money next week. Now, this bill would fund it through March 11th. The proposal also includes $350 million to address leaking military tanks that contaminated water near Pearl Harbor. The Senate is expected to vote and pass this early next week. The Justice Department arresting a New York couple accusing them of trying to launder money, $4.5 billion in cryptocurrency. Officials say the money was stolen from Bitfinex, which it has hacked in 2016. Chipotle CEO warning more price increases are on the way this year to deal with rising costs. The company says so far customers don't seem to mind. Sales in the latest quarter hitting $2 billion, beating expectations. Well, Team USA's Lindsay Jacobellis earning the first gold for the U.S. at the 2022 Winter Olympics. The 36-year-old taking first in women's snowboard cross-figure skater Nathan Chen and snowboarder Chloe Kim, both hoping to add some more gold today. Racking up that hardware for Team USA. My goodness, some of those steel shots are awesome. So changing what you eat could actually add up to 13 years to your life, and this does apply to all of us. Researchers in no Norway, they created a model of what might happen if someone replaced a diet, focusing on red meat and processed foods with more fruits, veggies, whole grains, and nuts. And they found if someone started eating a plant-based diet at 20, they could actually increase their lifespan by more than 10 years. So even maybe starting at the age of 60, according to this model, you could actually add maybe eight years to your lifespan. Well, it looks like not even the Girl Scouts could escape supply chain troubles. The organization sending out a letter to Girl Scout families in Southern California saying they're running low on Samoas and s'mores because of delivery delays. And they're asking troops to not only take the amount of cookies needed and not to overstock. Cookies can be ordered through February 27th. Oh, they're so good. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Those dosy -si dos they still have my heart all these years later from being a Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check up traffic now, sponsored by Accident Law Group, and get a check with traffic predictor so we can see what these speeds are going to look like on average on spots like the I-10, the 17, and the 51. We are definitely going to see those speeds drop about 10 to 15 miles per hour below the speed limit on the I-10 on average from the Loop 303 to the Mini Stack, right around 53 miles per hour hour right around that 630 time frame 55 miles per hour on the 17 from the 101 to the stack and the 51 remaining at or above the speed limit as I move traffic predictor forward by 7 a.m. those speeds drop even further right around 50 miles per hour on the I-10 and the 17 and of course continuing to drop right around that 730 time frame to about 45 miles per hour on the I-10 now if you're heading out the door right now here's your desert drive time on the I-10 eastbound from the loop 303 to the mini stack that average speed right around 54 miles per hour. So traffic predictor right on with that one. When I checked in with you in our five o'clock hour, that drive time is 25 minutes right now. The North Stack looking good on the 17, the 51. Two issues in the East Valley, the Loop 202 westbound, a stalled vehicle at Country Club and Priest Drive, a crash at University. Iris. All right, Megan, thank you. Hey, the time right now is 616. Temperatures in the 40s to 50s around the valley, and it's going to be one of those days where you start off maybe in layers, a heavier jacket in case those 40s and 50s are a little chilly for you. They were for me, but then you're shedding those layers pretty quickly as today is going to end up being the warmest day of the year so far. Initially, that was yesterday. We reached a high of 76 degrees. Today, we're going to add a couple more degrees to that. So 78 hour high as we look at another day with clear skies. So if you are going to be hitting the trails today. Maybe you've got friends and family in town and that's what they want to do. Make sure that you're taking plenty of water with you because those temperatures, they'll be trending up a little quicker today and sunblock also important even this time of year. Our temperature again at 53 now, but we'll be into the upper 50s by 9 a.m. 60s after that. Then we 
probably hit the 70s by lunchtime today. We're going to spend the entire afternoon and early evening in the 70s with that high of 78 peaking at around 4 o'clock and then back down into the upper 70s to low 70s as we head into that 6 o'clock and then 7 o'clock hour. Again, clear skies today in the valley and really clear skies across Arizona. While the valley reaches those highs in the mid to upper 70s, spots in northern Arizona and along the muggy on rim will climb into the 50s to 60s today. We're going to get more breezes there too, gusting near 25 miles an hour, but the strongest winds still along the Colorado River Valley where temperatures will be in the 60s to 70s with those windy and dusty conditions again today. Gusts as high as 40 miles an hour in spots like Bullhead City. Now those winds are coming in out of the north and so essentially they're funneling down the Colorado River Valley. They're funneling in around this area of high pressure that's setting up to our west. That's the reason temperatures are going to go as high as they are because of that ridge of high pressure. We'll see storm systems passing to our east, but that storm track stays out of our state for the next several days and instead we stay sunny and dry. But I am seeing some changes while the 80s will set in through the weekend. By the middle of next week, we'll be watching this next area of low pressure that could move in, bringing more clouds, another cool down, maybe some rain and snow. So you're going to notice those rain chances tick up on Tuesday just slightly to a 10% by Tuesday night. And for the high country, we'll see a return in that snow potential, only about a 20% chance. And of course, it's way too early to be sure how much snow, the exact timing of it, but it's what we're going to be watching in the coming days. So I'll keep you posted and you'll want to stay tuned for updates. In the meantime, 80s start tomorrow. They stick around through Monday and for the high country, look at those temperatures, 50s every day for Flagstaff with milder overnight lows too. 618, the WM Phoenix Open is underway right now at TPC Scottsdale. Even though it's still winter technically, we know it can get really warm during the day. Scottsdale Fire reminding people to stay hydrated, wear sunscreen, and comfy shoes. Paramedics treating several people for heat-related issues on Tuesday. Today, celebrities will be hitting the green for the Anexus Pro-Am. Here's a look at some of the tee times. Larry Fitzgerald and Emmett Smith will get things started at 830. Michael Phelps and Aaron Rodgers also on today's schedule. Josh Dumel as well, yes. some of the other names as well. It's exciting for sure. Well, our Phoenix Suns are heading back home with a fresh new winning streak, and it was a close one, but they did beat the 76ers in Philly last night. D-Book with a whopping 35 points. After three wins on the road, the Suns will be back at the Footprint Center tomorrow night, hosting their NBA final rivals, the Milwaukee Bucks. Still to come at 625, a little bit of, of canine cuteness on your Wednesday. Yeah, this is your bulletin board. We have a fun oh. event for all you dog lovers. Look at that, sweetheart. And coming your way at 635, the Let Joe Know team getting answers for some Valley residents who were not able to get their free COVID tests from the government. From tackling to teaching at 645, a former Arizona Cardinal now working in a Valley classroom. It's a story you're only going to see here on ABC 15 mornings. And we're talking about it. Things are heating up outside and there are a lot of things to do across the valley right now. Iris is going to highlight a few of them in her super seven day forecast as we show you this look from Live Drive. Well, he is up. For one of Hollywood's top honors, Best Supporting Actor nominee, Troy Kotzer is hoping to make history, too, at this year's Academy Awards, and he is from the Valley, making Arizona proud. Kotzer was born and raised in Mesa, nominated for his performance in the film Coda, which is about a boy from a mostly deaf family hoping to become a singer. When I was growing up, I would never miss watching the Oscars on TV and I'd see who won and I'd say, you know what, one day I hope to be there. But honestly, I thought it would be impossible, but I was wrong. So his co-star, Marley Matlin, was the first deaf actress to win an Oscar. And Coda is also up for Best Picture, along with Drive My Car, which features a character who signs. Kotzer says he hopes all of these projects are a sign of things to come. And we're going to see if he walks away with the Oscar March 27th. And you can watch it right here along with us on ABC 15. Well, you know, the pictures that you have taken at the happiest place on Earth, they could become part of the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. They are looking for pictures from visits to Disneyland and Disney World for a new project, highlighting how the parks have changed over the past decades. Hey, are you looking for some puppy to love? Get it? Some puppy to love? 
<laughs> Man, am I the only we'll one who it. likes that one? Jeez, okay. Bum. Hey, we've got an event for you on the bulletin board this morning. <laughs> if you're thinking about getting your sweetheart or maybe your kids a canine companion for Valentine's Day, head to Bark in the Park. This is happening at Civic Space Park in downtown Phoenix on Monday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can meet some of the adorable pups available for adoption from almost there, a mom and pups rescue in Phoenix. There will be live music, food, vendors, even a kissing booth with Aww. these sweet babies. Admission is free. You can start your day of love with the dogs. That's on today's bulletin board. Love puppy kisses. Okay, so from puppy kisses to National Pizza Day. How about that? If you are a pizza lover, Yelp has a job for you. This sounds incredible. Uh, amazing. The online review company hiring its first ever chief pizza officer. So what does that mean? It means for six months, you will be responsible for spreading your love of pizza and also sharing the latest pizza trends with the Yelp community. And you're going to get a big payoff, $25,000. Wow. Okay, so all you have to do is submit a 30 to 60 second video explaining why you're the most qualified to be the chief pizza officer. The deadline to apply is the 28th. Up next at 630, who needs cash or credit cards? Coming soon, you can buy stuff by just tapping your phones together. Can't get those free government COVID tests delivered? RV parks, apartment complexes, even dorms now say they have the problem. I'm investigator Joe Ducey with ways to get around it if you have the same issue. And it is National School Counselor Week. So still ahead, I am speaking with the professionals about the desperate need for more resources for our students. If you're going to be outside enjoying our warmer conditions, air quality looking in the to stay in the good to moderate range. UV index puts us at a 45 minute burn time. We'll talk about how quickly those temperatures will climb today and the rest of the week in that super seven day forecast.